welcome and my name is harry jacobs and i am the north of 60 gamer and welcome to the north of 60 gaming channel so what is going on today we are ready for our coffee and kickstarter and today's discussion is really just a number of different things that i picked out just of interest to me and hopefully interest to you uh the first thing i was looking at i was glad for the news that amazon is cracking down on board game counterfeiters this has been a problem of people, mainly the Chinese sellers, are selling knockoffs. As easy as that. It's easy enough for these counterfeiters to get the files and do a little off hanky-panky and create these four counterfeit games and then sell them as a third-party seller on Amazon. One of the things you should look for, golden rule, caveat emptor, buyer beware. Another good one to... Uh, look at is if a deal is too good to be true it probably is if you don't see any reviews or you see negative reviews for a third-party seller I would probably want to steer clear of that so just um, keep that in mind when you see these amazing prices chances are it's a counterfeit you really want to counterfeit in your collection it happens I'm sure that you could send it back to Amazon but by the time you open it and realize it's a counterfeit Amazon is I don't know what Amazon's going to do I assume they will take it back some interesting stuff that I didn't realize I, I just come across my Kickstarter updates today uh, a particular campaign just said well you know things are going really good except for the fact that we don't have any cardboard at this point to do your counters there is a cardboard shortage and this is affecting production in the various plants that um, manufacturing plants over in China they just can't get enough cardboard to punch our counters or create our counters this I believe is going to be an ongoing problem uh, which will write itself according to the articles that I read but it's going to take some time the biggest problem is, is that there's a lot of boxes going to Amazon and a lot of people are not recycling them and most of what we buy in terms of Panda would buy or a Chinese manufacturer would buy would be recycled cardboard that would be then used for counters. I think we're going to see increased costs to production because of this, as well as I think uh, at this point, I would say that at this point in juncture, uh, I'm, we're looking at campaigns now that are going to be 18 months in length from the time it, it's fun successfully. So be prepared to have your money tied up for a good year and a half to two years now if you're funding something. Pretty good, not too bad if you're bagging 50, 60, but if you're bagging a five or $600 investment, that's a long time to have your money sitting with uh, Joe Publisher. Uh, so just be careful what you do. Uh, you know, this is a crazy time and there's so many games coming into the marketplace. Just spend your money, money wisely. I'm not saying you don't spend it, just spend it wisely. Uh, so what I'm, really preaching is patience especially with smaller publishers that may not get the attention that the, the the bigger publishers might get from a manufacturer be patient they will deliver your games they want to deliver your games you're just going to have to be more patient than usual so please uh give give your support to these publishers and designers on their games and just be aware that things are going to be affected by these shortages of not only cardboard but of the containers to ship them in and the ships to put them on lastly just a quick note on board game arena uh, i've talked about board game arena before as Madi has taken them over still being run by the same two partners i believe but with an oversight now uh through a Mazdi. there are new games coming to that platform all the time pandemic has just been released i've been playing a lot of legends of arnak uh, I think the beta versions that are out there, we're looking at Harbor, Dice Hospital, Castles of Burgundy, Viticulture, Solar Storm, all brand new games to this platform. They're all in beta. You can go play them on Board Game Arena. You do not have to have real people. Well, you do because Board Game Arena connects you with real people. Be advised, though, as I say on Board Game Arena, people are sharks. So if you don't have a regular group, be prepared to put some investment time in learning the game because there are maximizers out there and they will slaughter you. 
Digital board games. This is great. Uh, what's coming up? Uh, Concordia, if you live in a hole. <laughs> Pardon me. And if you don't have Steam, Concordia is coming to the Steam platform probably in the fall, I think November-ish. Uh, and there's a lot of awareness going on and they're asking for help. And they are really involved with this game. They are doing a great job in engaging people, saying, what do you want? How do you like what we see so far? Uh, this is better than some of the other games that we've uh, come out where people are going, the interface is not that good. Uh, Gaia has just been released onto Steam uh, a couple of weeks ago. That is the uh, next game that uses some of the same play mechanics as Terra Mystica, a game that I'm not particularly fond of, but only because it's a little bit more abstract and a little heavier than I like. But uh, if that's your types of game you like, please go off and... Uh, you can play that on Steam now, either synchronous or asynchronous, I believe. Uh, other games that are out there is the Dominion, the Deck Builder. I believe that's in beta right now. It may have been released or is in early release. So you can play one of the premier Deck Builder games that are out there on the market today. It's uh, showing its age, uh, in my opinion, in terms of the play. But it's still the grandfather of some of the more modern deck builders that we've seen certainly uh, in sort of the cards of Valaria, which is more of a tableau builder, but let's just say Draconis, uh, Thunderstone Quest, games along that lines. So again, lots of digital board games. Root and Spirit have been out for a while. Charterstone is out there. Splendor is out there. Fighters Realm, Space Realms is out there. Lots of really good board games. So you never really have to worry about finding somebody to play with. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Uh, we're going to go down and do the Kickstarters. Please uh, subscribe to my channel, like it, or hit the notifications. I do this every week. I, I do a quick 5 to 10 minute discussion, sometimes longer, and then some Kickstarters. Trying to keep it to another 10 minutes. Trying to keep it down to 20 to 25 minutes. I don't always works that it doesn't always work that way but thank you for being here and let's get down to kickstarters right now if you have any comments put it down below so let's start in with the kickstarters first up pulp invasion x2 if you have not played pulp invasion i highly recommend it i bought it mainly because of the artwork it is absolutely amazing i i remember the fantasy and science fiction magazines of the 60s and through the 70s i love science fiction this has a great narrative story you, you fight some ultimate bad guys in each one of these solar systems looking for different things this is a great game and i highly recommend buying into it if you don't own pulp fiction it's 39 euros or about 56 dollars. you get all in right the, the, the core game plus the x1 and x2 expansions i highly recommend it it's just 12 bucks if you want it, or 12 euros, about $18 Canadian, if you just want to get into the game itself. There are some of these old uh, science fiction, planet magazine, galaxy magazines. I don't see any fantasy in science fiction, but these are the 30s and 50s pulp fiction not stories that we grew up on. You would see Arthur Clarke, Isaac Asimov, Ray Bradbury, Harlan Ellison, all these great science fiction writers of the future. We have some unboxings. There's more captains. There's more vassals. There's more worlds, more super weapons. There's a landing team dice. That seems to be new. Uh, more exploration cards. So what's in the box? We're going to get two new, cap two new captain cards, some more hegemony super weapons planet cards uh event ex exploration cards which is new and then an etched crew dice and you can get the add-ons which is the the uh rocket man cloth bag and i don't know what that's used for considering it's all cards but that seems to be kind of interesting meeple mountain has covered it the playthrough as i said 12 euros 39 euros so 18 dollars and 56 dollars you can try the game where Tabletopia. So if you want to play it on Tabletopia and then the fulfillment. So there's not a lot here in terms of, of uh, content, but he's banking on return visitors or return uh, customers 
14,000 has already been raised, so he's already doubled what he's got. 475 backers, there's plenty of time. I'm sure this is going to come in at $25,000 and probably six or 700 backers, maybe a thousand backers. But I highly recommend you taking a look at this. I like the game as a solo tear, solo, solo tear, solo tear game. Wow. Uh, my brain is obviously not here today. So I like it as a solitaire game, and I hopefully you would enjoy it too. I would put it up there with Arkham Horror Noir or Arkham Noir if you enjoy that type of game. This is a game for you, uh, and I would highly recommend it. This one, I don't know why it's so cheap. The goal was only seventeen hundred, and this the, the they've raised nine thousand. There's one hundred eighty six backers. This is an interactive audio adventure. Now, I did watch it a little bit. And you can hear the voice of Tom Baker. And if you don't know who Tom Baker is, you're obviously not a Doctor Who fan. So anyway, um, what's in the box? It looks like we have a map. And then you would use the map to look up something in an app. And the app will tell you where you're going to go. And it's a spoken adventure. It is backed. I'm not sure I'm going to back it. But I just thought I'd bring it. It sounds like fun. It's... It's obviously maybe like a build-your-own-adventure style game, which seems to be popular, but it's more theaterish like And I, I just thought I'd like to bring this to you. They're calling it a folklore fantasy RPG like never before. And this is a new expanded version of the original game. So obviously there was an original game here. Certainly take a look. It's not particularly expensive, I don't think. Uh, the game map is $21 Canadian. Game map and Weirding Woods expansion is... Twenty thirty-eight dollars. So if you have the original game, and obviously Oliver McNeil has backed a number of these, what has he done in the past? I did not look. I usually look at these through the lenses you look at. We have soundscapes. Now he is a visual artist, as best I can tell. So this would be interesting. Uh, I may back it just because I'm curious. But I'm not sure at this point. So let's just put a reminder on there. And I may uh, back it later on. But I think this is worth a great look. Go ahead. Look at it. Blood of the Northman. I believe this is a reprint. And there's a Test of Faith expansion. Uh, it's going to fun. There it is. It's They want 14,633 is the goal. 12,396 and 131 backers. 14 days to go. Again, I think they're backing on people who have already previously... But the game, this is Zaska or Czechska Games. Uh, they did a couple of games. I looked at them. Uh, I've seen their games before. Gremlins Inc. is one of their games, I believe. Lots of miniatures. There's long ships, catapults, charges. I don't know what the game's about. Looks like we've got unique tiles. So this is basically looks like an explorer type game where you're going to put some terrain down. You're going to visit and take your and then fight. So it looks like there might be a bit measure of area control here. I'm not big into area control. I'm not really big into miniature games, actually, to tell you the truth. But I thought it was interesting enough to know that I'd bring this forward to you. Uh, Blood of Northmen, uh, Overview, anybody else, pledges, retailers, reviews. Up oh, there we have a view, video review. There's so the Dice Tower, there's Stella. So we have quite a few video reviews going, which is good. It's a well done, uh, looks like a well done campaign. 35 euros for the expansion, 50 euros if you want the game itself, 80 euros if you want them combined, which is 118, 120 with 25 shipping. So that's about 150, probably a bit more than I'm interested in doing and i'm trying to scale down what i'm buying lately but i think you should take a look at this game i certainly would take a look at this seriously uh if i was kind of not trying to just hedge my bet and dollar wise but i think you should look at it i think it looks like a pretty decent game now the next game whoops this is ice flows and foes the reason why is I hear all the time is, well, what can I bring to my six and seven year olds? This game is built as a six plus, push the hunters and fishing boats off the board, but not the animals. So it looks like you're gonna put ice flows on some board and you're gonna to try to not push off Jenga-like 
I guess, uh, onto the fall off onto the table. There we are. There's a little young lady playing and pushing things off. Oh, there it goes. It fell off. So this looks like a pretty cool game for kids. Uh, the kids like these physical dexterity games. My um, my grandchild would like a game like this. She's, what, 10 now? It uh, looks like kind of fun. I would look at this game. If you got a six-year-old who wants to play a Jenga but can't quite get that dexterity, this looks like a great game for them to play, play with your family. The standard game is 19 euros. It looks like the deluxe game is 49 euros. And looks, oh, they've done monuments. I think that was just a recent Kickstarter. We got some stretch goals, which is good. So we got some shipping. Canada is about $19, up to five. If you're buying one copy, if it's up to, if it's 11 pounds or more. But I think this looks like a decent little kid game. I'm not bagging it because I don't have any kids. I have dogs, but I don't have kids. So, uh, but this looks like a decent game. I would consider it if you're looking for something for your younger kids in your house. Consider it. And you can hear my dog. That is my nine-week-old Malmute puppy who is a foster in our house that doesn't know enough to be quiet. Lastly, and this is the best, and I did look at this game a while ago. This skill. This, I did look at this game a while ago. It is distilled. I love scotch. You can see it's just going crazy. It's ticking up to 90,000. 22,000 was his goal. He's got 1,000 backers. He did a lot of great pre-work on this to bring this out. So there was a lot of awareness in the, the groups, reviewers. He did this campaign absolutely amazing. The uh, uh, Paverson Games. This is his first created game. Uh, so Dave Beck has done amazing here in terms of the design. And uh, he has Eric Evanson as the arts and graphic designer. I think it has a solo out of the box. You are going to create whiskey. Who doesn't want to create whiskey? And you can see I've already backed the all-in pledge because I am a sucker for whiskey. Just don't tell my wife I did that. You can just get the $1 pledge or just the recipe and uh, play print and play. But you can get the uh, base game for $55 US or $68 Canadian. But heck, you might as well go in. If you like whiskey the way I do, you're gonna going to go in. The original blend has the, 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 the player boards, identity cards, recipe cards, premium ingredients. So you're going to put, <laughs> excuse me, you're going to put your whiskey together and then you're going to sell it. And whoever has kind of the most money at the end, I think wins, if I recall. It's been a while since I looked at it. You go to the market. So there's a market phase. There's a couple different markets, as you can see. It is an easy game to play. I wouldn't call it a filler gateway game. I'm, it's a medium weight game, multiple markets, which I always like. And there's an age phase where you age it. And then we have the hell to play videos. You can play it on Tabletop Simulator and Tabletopia, download the rules. Man versus Meeple. We've got Rado playing it, or there we go. So I looked at it early on. I think this is a great game. I think this is the one. If you're going to bag anything in July, I want to back this one. And this is probably the only game I'm going to back this month. Uh, I am not backing the 300 Master Distillers Edition. I don't have that much money. I'm broke. Shipping to Canada is 20 to $30. That's a bit on the pricey side. But uh, maybe I should buy a second game. And uh, But I'm not doing that. December 2022. This is where I'm starting to get into that when I talked about it in the beginning of my video. We are starting to see 18 months at this point, which is kind of sad, but I, that's the reality. And we're going to have to just be patient with these type of games and publishers that it's going to take 18 months, which probably means 20 months or more. So, but be patient. I think this is a decent game. I think it's going to be well worth the wait and it's going to be there for you to back. I would look at this game and back it. And I think the components are great. I, and I only saw the tabletop 
simulator, the Tabletopia version, and it was a prototype. So I highly recommend taking a look at Distilled and perhaps backing that. If I was going to recommend any one of those five, I would say Distilled is the one you're going to want. I'm backing Pulp because I'm going to get the expansion. But that is all I have for you today. I thank you very much. Again, if you like my stuff, please uh, like it. I really do appreciate it. Subscribe and hit notifications. With that, I'm going to enjoy the rest of the day. I have to go back to work. Uh, it is 12.30 and I have to go back to 1. Go back to work at 1. So I will see you all later. Thanks very much, folks. I will see you later.